Hey guys, welcome back to another video with Carl's Garage brought to you by Straight Outta Content. Today, we are going to be changing the valve cover gasket on my 2015 Kia Optima. In this video, I will show you step by step of how to change your valve cover gasket and the tools you need to do it. Stay tuned to the end of the video so that you can see the Carl's Garage rating on how difficult it is to do this DIY project at home. If this is your first time viewing this channel, we welcome you. Please consider subscribing. Also, hit that like button for YouTube's algorithm so that they can make this video big. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. Okay, these are the tools that you will need to do this job successfully. We will start with a 19 millimeter wrench, a 10 millimeter socket, a 12 millimeter socket. I am going to be using my small wrench. You're going to want some type of brush to scrape off that old gasket, but we will show you that once we start. A flathead screwdriver because once all the bolts are taken out of the valve cover gasket, you're going to want to pry it, uh, pry it apart. You are going to need two types of clamps to get the hose clamps off. I recommend having some type of rag, definitely brake cleaner, because you are going to have to clean the surface of the valve cover. The parts that you need to do this job is a valve cover gasket kit. I will put the link to this kit in the description below. This is the number for the kit. I picked up some gloves because the job might get dirty. Okay, now let's move on to the most important part of doing this job. Okay guys, I just wanted to stress before we actually start this job, the reason why it's kind of difficult, and again, I will give my rating at the end, but the reason why this job is kind of difficult is because some cars you can remove a valve cover gasket with no problem. This car happens to have a high pressure fuel pump regulator on top of the valve cover. So the first thing that you must do when doing this valve cover job is to disconnect and actually pull out the fuel pump relay that's in the electrical box right over here. So let me go ahead and show you that. And then you need to start the car and let the car start and then shut off. And that means that there's no more fuel going to the regulator. So let's go ahead and do that. So the relay that we're looking for is in this box right here. So let's go ahead and open this up. Oh, a little dusty. And as you see, right there, fuel pump and horn, we wanna remove the fuel pump. So let's go ahead and do that. That's this big green one right here. Be very gentle. Just wanna wiggle it out of there. Okay, now that we have this out, now we need to go inside the car, start it, and let the car die, and then we will remove the negative battery cable. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and start the car. Okay, now that we've done that step, it's time to remove the negative battery terminal. You will need a 10 millimeter socket to do this. Okay, you just need a 10 millimeter socket to get the negative battery terminal off. Okay, okay now that we have that off, we can move to other parts of the engine and start disassembling. Okay, so the first thing that we will be doing, we will be removing this nut right here. This is a 19 millimeter for the fuel pressure regulator. Um, this is a high flow. That's the reason why we had to remove the relay. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're gonna be very gentle with this. You do not want to bend this or mess this up. So be very gentle. Let me get a rag to catch because fuel is definitely going to want to come out of here. 
Now this is not gonna wanna pull out because it's really wedged in there, but once we remove all the bolts and everything and lift this up, it will pull out. So you can sort of get it out, but it's so stiff in here, it's not gonna wanna pull out here. So let's move on to this piece right here. We'll stick the rag underneath. Okay, now we have to remove this connector. It's a little tricky, a little tricky. So what you need to do, you need to lift up this back piece here, lift this up. Might need a screwdriver. Lift it up like that. So what you wanna do is once you lift this piece right here up, you wanna stick your screwdriver in here and kind of pick at this to get this to come open and then it'll come right off. Okay, so this is kind of difficult. It actually requires a specific tool, fork tool to go down here be behind this gray clip and actually pry it out. You can't do it with your fingernails. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use two flathead screwdrivers, get it down behind here and press this off. It's actually my first time doing it. So if you guys have these types of issues at home, this solution should work. I want to go ahead and kind of wrap it above because the fuel is definitely going to want to shoot out of this. Take these two screwdrivers, stick them behind this little plastic piece. See if I can get this. Okay, so you can kind of pull it, get one back here, another one back here. Press off. There you go. There you go. So I was able to use these, some Carl's uh, Garage DIY tricks. Again, the reason why I do these types of videos is because everybody on YouTube makes it look easy. But actually, I saw a video and he did it very easy. If you have the orange clip, you have it very easy. You just squeeze the side and pull it off. But I don't, I have a newer model. So this is the time, this is the kind that they put on the newer models. So now we can remove that. Okay. Now let's go ahead to do this. Okay. A little fuel coming out of it, that's fine. This is just a clip. Let's remove this clip. I want to squeeze, I don't know if you can see that, you just want to squeeze with your thumb. There you go, that comes off. Now, we will not remove these two bolts yet. There's still some other pieces that we need to remove for this. So let's go ahead and start disassembling the air intake box so that we can get to some bolts over here that are kind of hard. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take these little clamps off. We're gonna kind of relieve some pressure here. Um, we have to take it off the valve cover here. So we need to remove this piece. We need to remove this. We need to remove this whole assembly right here so that we can get to this side because there's a few bolts in here that actually go to this fuel pressure regulator. So I'm gonna remove this. Sometimes they get on there pretty thick. Okay, now we're gonna remove these back here. Move these back. Okay, so that can come off of there. And I'm going to loosen this nut back here. I don't know if you guys can see that with this uh, 10 millimeter socket. thing off up here. Pull this back. Okay. 
If they don't want to go, a trick that you can do is just grab your pliers and turn them. Because chances are they haven't been moved since the factory. So you just give it a turn. You can kind of turn it and pull it off at the same time. Remember, you don't want to snap this plastic, but then stick your two screwdrivers in there, pop that baby off. There we go. Do the same thing here. Go ahead and give it a little twist. Twist the Rui. Kind of breaks it a little bit. Okay, got a little gap. Now, what I'm going to do is, there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here, down here. So what we're going to do now to rotate this assembly here, we're going to just loosen the bolt on the throttle body to make this rotate kind of up. So we want to rotate this air arm up a little bit and get it out of the way here. So let's go ahead and loosen this. Now we just want to pull this up, and now this will rotate a little bit more. Sorry. Okay, now we can rotate this baby out of the way. Now we have access, a lot more access to this piece right here as opposed to taking the whole thing off. Kind of save a step. So let's go ahead and start removing everything over here. Okay, actually, to give myself a little more room, I'm gonna actually remove this so that this can come down even further and give us a nice, big working area. These are 10 millimeter bolts. Just undo these. this it's not connected to anything okay now this will actually rotate down even further giving us tons of working room there and a trick that you want to always do is if you can put the bolts back put them back this way you don't lose them okay now I'm gonna take off this piece and we're gonna kind of just start disassembling a lot of things in this area this um, this ground wire here, there's a ground wire here that we need to disassemble, and this whole fuel rail, I mean this whole rail that plugs into each coil pack, we're gonna just basically take everything off because it all goes this way. So we'll start with this hose. Remember, you got a stubborn hose, grab it with your pliers, a little twist, break off. There we go. Again, don't squeeze too tight because this thing is even though it's a valve cover, it's still plastic, so you don't want to want to break anything. And again, I'm gonna use this. So what I'm gonna do is stick it back on over here. This way, I don't misplace it. Okay. Let's use my flashlight. Now we're gonna start to take apart things. Move this out the way, and 
we need to get to this fuel rail bracket down here, but let's go ahead and remove this first. Okay, so I'm gonna start doing these clips first. Okay, let me know whenever you're ready. Yes, ready. Oh. Okay, so we're gonna start removing each coil pack and we need to get this big rail out of the way. So let's get these gray clips up. If you saw me, if you saw me change my spark plugs, you notice, you know, I mean, you can, if you want to learn how to remove these, uh, go back and look at my video where I change my spark plugs. These little great clips are stubborn. There you go. A little stubborn, you might have to use a screwdriver to get it up, but you can't get it off unless you get this plastic clip up. You just squeeze and pull it off. One. Two. Do you need to come over here? Okay, once those are all up, now in order to get this rail off, we need to start removing these 10 millimeter bolts right here. Okay, so I need to remove these three 10 millimeter bolts in order to get this fuel rail up or in order to get this, this rail up. Again, if you can replace the bolt after removing it, go ahead and do it. I'm gonna go ahead and do that with this bolt. Okay, we got this bracket off. I'm gonna go ahead and replace it. This way I don't lose it. Now we're gonna remove this one right here. Okay, I'm gonna remove this one right here. Okay, and then the last one is right here. This thing right here will just come on up. It's actually tied right here, so let's go ahead and remove this ground cable. Be very gentle, there's a lot of oil that's in there, and we don't want to break this bolt though. You can, you can cut it. Okay, once you get this uh, ground cable nut loose, I'm gonna go remove that. Now this thing is so free. Remove it, be very gentle with your fuel line. Remove this thing out of the way, it's just electrical so it can be bent. And you know my motto, if it can go back, we'll put it back. So I'm gonna put this back. Okay, 
Okay, so this is gonna be, in order to get all this bracketry off, because it's all kind of connected to this fuel rail, you're gonna have a few bolts to get off. This was one of the main ones. There's this screw, and then there's actually a nut right next to it. You're gonna need a shallow 10 millimeter to get to the nut, but let me go ahead and show you re me removing this, uh, this 10 millimeter bolt from here. Careful, you don't want to drop it. Okay, so we just removed the bolt next to it. Uh, be very careful, I dropped it, but luckily I have a, a magnet and I was able to get it out of there. And then right next to that 10 millimeter bolt is a nut. And you need a shallow 10 millimeter socket in order to get it off. I got one, so let's go and remove it. Let's do things out of the way because we want to remove this. And that's going to give us access to this bracket and give us a lot more clearance for this right here. I can remove it by hand now. I'm not really worried about this bolt. I mean about this uh, nut because the bolt that goes next to it really keeps it in there. This nut is really not even needed especially for this stupid bracket. I'm probably gonna leave it out. Okay, just a little stubborn. I am not putting this nut back. <laughs> this. Can you see this? <laughs> this dumb little nut. Okay. Now that we got that out of the way, this comes off. Up there. This bracket comes off. And we got everything out of the way. So we got this whole piece right here that can go way over here giving us access to the to this bracket right here has a I think what is a 12 millimeter bolt that needs to come off and then that will relieve the pressure on this and then we can get to the bolt here and actually get this thing out of the way so let's go ahead and do that okay so this is why you will see the rating for this uh, whole job at the end of this video my Carl's garage rating I had to use this little 10 millimeter wrench in order to get this see now it's loose this stupid little bracket <laughs> has a little 10 millimeter um, nut underneath it no it has a 10 millimeter bolt underneath it same as these underneath it holding this in keeping it extremely tight and uh, you I had to remove this you see, I had to take this hose off of here, take that off of there. I had to remove this nut down here, all to get enough looseness so that I can hold this back. Stick this in there like this and turn it slowly by slowly, turn by turn, until now I can get my hand in there and turn it. And I probably still might drop it. I'm gonna try not to, but I'm actually turning it by hand. And here we go. This little bolt right here is extremely tough to get to. Um, and it holds this whole assembly in 
So now, now this wants to come on out. See, now it wants to come on out. Now it's a lot looser. I won't even, uh, I won't touch this till all the bolts are loose on the valve cover. Now we can actually address the valve cover bolts. That was the hardest part of this job is over here. Now everything is unhooked, the fuel line and everything is unhooked. Those little brackets need to come up. I need to loosen every 10 millimeter bolt. And then uh, there's just a few brackets, but you just want to make, I think that was the main bracket. And then there's a bracket over there. This bracket right here has to be taken off as well in order to actually lift the valve cover up. So once that bracket is taken off, remove all the 10 millimeter bolts all around the whole thing. Leave it still, remove this, and then remove the valve cover. So let's go ahead and remove that bracket. Okay, so now we need to remove this bracket because if you don't remove it, you will not be able to lift the valve cover up and take it off. So it's a 12 millimeter socket. This is the really the only 12 millimeter socket on the whole thing. So let's go to, ahead and remove it. Get the bracket out, you know my motto, stick the bolt back. Give it a couple turns. Okay, now let's go ahead and remove these two clips right here. That broke because it's old. <laughs> Let me stick something underneath to try to lift it up. Now it's time to remove each coil pack. There's a 10 millimeter um, bolt that goes into each one. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll just go ahead and loosen all four of them up. I can guarantee you we're going to see oil on the coil packs. A lot of it, probably. No, not too much, but there is a little. Put the coil packs up. Remember to put your bolts back. And I'm putting mine in order, so one, two, three, four.
Okay, now I feel confident in removing the uh, electronic fuel pump, the high pressure fuel pump. Let's go ahead and remove the two bolts on either side of this. Okay, so now it's time to remove this, the uh, high pressure fuel pump. So what, don't just take off one bolt and then take off the other. You actually have to loosen them kind of evenly. So a few twists here, a few twists here on either side and evenly lift it up. Uh, they're two 10 millimeter bolts. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna break it. Lift it up, just a couple twists there. Break it loose, couple twists there. Then just evenly twist it. Back and forth. Okay, so they're both loose. I'm gonna try to get them both at the same time. I'm gonna clean up my area actually. It's a lot of dust. Okay. This one's actually a lot easier to get to. This one over here is a little harder. So we're gonna do this like this, like this, a little trick. Spin them at the same time. And again, this is extremely delicate, so be very very gentle when removing this thing. It is not a piece that you want to have to go and pay for later. Okay, so both of them are out evenly. I'm going to remove the bolts. Make sure you save these. Right, left from up there. Now we're going to remove this. Put it somewhere safe. And as we're lifting up, we're pulling on this to come on out. It's gonna be very easy. You're also gonna to wanna to to pull on that. And there you go. This right here is your high pressure fuel pump. It's pretty cool. I think you have two fuel pumps in this car, I'm not mistaken. Leave a comment down below. Does this car have, well obviously there's a fuel pump in the tank and then this is one up top as well because this is a GDI engine. So this is what kind of puts the gasoline right in the cylinder. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this somewhere safe and then let's go ahead and start removing all the rest of the 10 millimeter bolts. Okay guys, so this bolt right here is probably the most difficult valve cover bolt um, to get to. Everything else is pretty easy, but it's right under the fuel rail. And as you see, there's not much flex here. What you do not want to do is break this fuel rail. You're done, you might as well tow the car to a dealership. I What I had to do to get this bolt up is just break it loose with a 10 millimeter wrench. Then from there, it was actually easy enough to spin with my fingers. And there's enough play in this to lift it up or whatever and actually get the bolt out of the way. What I'm gonna do is just lift it up. Be very gentle with this fuel rail. You can, I can bend the nut and get it out of there. The bolt, see? Okay. There we go. See? And I was able to bend it out of the way and slide it out of there. So this is actually the first valve cover bolt that we have out of the valve cover. I'm going to go ahead and take off this PVC. Take off this um, hose right here and then remove the rest of the bolts.
Everything is removed, all the bolts are removed from everywhere, um, all the hoses are disconnected. This thing is ready to lift up. Now, it's not just going to lift up easy because it's been on there for 130,000 miles. It's definitely stuck in there. So we're going to have to use a little bit of a pry tool. <clears throat> if you have a kind of a crowbar, you can use that. I'm just going to use my screwdriver, stick it in there, kind of lift it up a bit. You don't want to break your screwdriver. You just need to kind of break the seal a little bit in different areas. But you don't want to crack the crack the plastic on this either. Again, these are in here, but these are actually in the valve cover itself. They're not holding anything down. See, they're just actually just in the valve cover. Even these long ones. They're just in the valve cover. They're not holding anything down. So all the bolts are definitely removed. So you gotta be very, this process is very delicate. There's some, uh, some gasket sealer right here. Okay, so as you can see, this little wiggly, there's some gasket sealer here. There's also some gasket sealer back there because this is where the leak normally happens. And I think they know that. That's why they put some extra uh, gasket sealer here uh, so my leak was back here and it was as soon as I drive it would just be spraying oil all back all over my um, manifold uh, heat plate and stuff like that back there so I'm definitely gonna put some uh, liquid gasket here and back there but I'm gonna actually start here see if I can just get it in there gently you don't want to scratch the surface and you don't want to crack this this is an extremely delicate process. So you can actually kind of hear it cracking, kind of loosening up there. You just want to move it, push on it a little bit. See it starting to lift. Just kind of just wiggle with it, just play with it. Kind of do it evenly. So if you feel it's kind of too tight, don't keep pushing in that area. Okay. Let's go over here to this side. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. Get a little lift. Okay. A little lift there. Now I'm going to go to the back with my shorter screwdriver. Okay, I'm going to come to the back with my shorter screwdriver. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's what you want to hear. Now from here, you can kind of do it from hand. Manhandle this puppy. I'm going to lift it up there. Okay. Okay, so from here we loosened it up with our screwdriver very gently. Now we're going to remove it. Remove our valve cover. Be very gentle. Looks like there's some stuck somewhere. Let's 
So as you can see, the fuel line enters the block right there. And I have my 19 millimeter wrench on there. Um, you have to move these lines right here out of the way. I actually had my wife who's filming do that for me. And I was barely able to get the wrench on there and loosen it, which gave me enough room to actually get the valve cover off. If you have this model year Kia Optima and you're trying to remove your valve cover, you cannot do it unless you loosen this. You don't have to take it off. That's why I'm leaving the ratchet. I mean, that's why I'm leaving the wrench there, but you do have to at least turn it to the left 30 degrees in order to get it loose. So that's it right in there. And see, I'm leaving it. So whenever I put the valve cover back on, whenever I put the valve cover back on, I will, um, the ratchet is, I mean, the wrench is already on there and then I can just tighten it up and I won't have to worry about having to get it back on there because it was extremely hard to get it on there. Let's go ahead and remove the valve cover. Okay guys, so I had to remove or loosen, I had to loosen the kind of bolt that's on the end of this fuel rail that goes into the block. So you cannot remove your valve cover if you have this year model unless you loosen that down there. It took me my 19 millimeter wrench to do that. Let's go ahead and now we can finally remove the valve cover. Voila. Okay, at this point, now you want to really inspect the engine, look to see if you see any um, unnormal wear and tear on your engine. I've inspected it, it doesn't look bad. I can't say that I see any metal shavings. The oil is definitely black, it definitely needs an oil change. But outside of that, there isn't the normal engine damage that these specific Kia engines have um, the metal shavings and the rod bearings and stuff like that tend to go out in these engines in these engines causing engine failure and they have to replace it fortunately i'm one of the lucky ones i only use synthetic oil since i've had the car since 70,000 miles it now has 130,000 miles and outside of the dark you know old oil uh, the engine from at least these two cams and everything everything looks good Another awesome thing is that most, usually most engines with timing chains seem to run for a long time. So uh, as long as I continue to maintain this engine and continue to put good oil in it and everything and stuff like that, change the valve cover gasket in time, I think that this engine can probably last 200,000 miles. That is definitely my goal to have a 200,000 mile Kia <laughs> on the market. It's kind of funny, but for my YouTube channel, I kind of want that. So. Let's go ahead and remove all these different gaskets. Uh, I'm gonna start with the uh, fuel pump gasket and then remove all the rest of the gaskets. Make sure you're very careful when wiping the, uh, the valve cover area. As you see, there's a lot of dust and debris. So I'm gonna be very careful as I wipe this stuff away. You want to clean up all the different, all the surfaces all the way around. You want to clean everything up, get it nice and clean. I have a lot of, I have a lot of debris, so I'm kind of wiping it off before I pull this valve cover gasket off and then it sprinkles dust all over the cams.
Right here, it's kind of loose, so I think I'm going to put some, some gasket sealer right there. Definitely back here, because this is where it was leaking most of the oil. All that crud. Okay, well, let's go ahead and lift the gasket. Be gentle, you don't want it to break off in pieces. Okay, keep this for reference when putting on your new gasket. Let's go ahead and clean, clean this surface up a little bit. Okay, so this is the valve cover. It's actually extremely clean. Like I'm surprised how clean this is. I don't know if you can actually see, but this thing is extremely clean. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and install the new gasket and then put it back on the car. Okay, so we want to stick this gasket in here and there. It really only goes on one way. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so you just want to stick it in there. There you go. That's basically it for that. It's not too complicated. Now let's do the main gasket. Mm -hmm. You show. Okay, so this is all one piece, so we're going to go ahead and stick this on. And you're just going to push these pieces into the uh, into the grooves. Line everything up. If you, uh, it's a very subtle, but there's actually um, like rigid parts right here and this spot right here and this spot right here is uh, where they had the gasket sealer. So that's where I'll also be applying mine right around where the um, camshafts are. So I see why they do it, but actually back here is where the leak happens. So, and it's a really wide surface. I think that was a bad design because the, the valve cover itself is very thin, but there's actually a lot of metal back here and I can see why over time um, pressure would build and squirt oil out of this area back here. So I will definitely be putting gasket sealer back here. Make sure everything's pushed down. Even, you know, that was up a little bit. So make, sure, oh, make sure everything's pushed down and it's grooved. I know that there were some concerns with this the way that this thing fits but I'm not gonna lie I mean I heard that the Felpro gasket didn't fit well but this I mean it's going along every single groove that it's supposed to um, so yeah actually this I would recommend this gasket I will put the link in the description below but I'd have to recommend this gasket. It actually went, it actually went in very easy. And everything fits very well. Some gaskets don't do that. This one did. So let's go ahead and put it on the car. Thank you.